everyone, and welcome to today's episode. This is going to be a really fun episode today. I am talking to Lisa Steele, who is the author of the classic book, Fresh Eggs Daily, which I happen to have a copy of with me right here, and also Duck Eggs Daily. And we are mostly just going to talk about chickens today. Welcome to the show, Lisa. Hey, thanks for having me back. It is really fun to chat with you again. And um, so I know lots of people know your story, but for those who don't, can you just tell them how exactly you got interested in chickens and why you started keeping them? Yeah, I actually raised chickens as a kid. I grew up across the street from my grandparents' chicken farm, and they were honest to goodness chicken farmers. That's what they did for a living. And we had a small flock. Uh, you know, growing up, I was in 4-H and, and did that whole thing, living in the country. But I realized that there was a big world out there. So after college, I got a degree in accounting, and I went to work on Wall Street. And it didn't take too many years before I realized that really wasn't where I belonged. So long story short, I ended up living in Virginia with my husband. He was in the Navy and we got a small flock of chickens. And that sort of was the beginning of the end for me. Uh, We're in Maine now, but it's been, I guess, 12 years since we got that flock. And as an adult, it's just such a different experience than when you're a kid. You know, when you're a kid, animals just need more chores. And we loved the baby chicks, but after they grew up, we really had no interest in chickens at all. But, you know, as an adult, they, they all have names and they're so friendly. And, you know, I just am really enjoying it the second time around. Yeah, I think they are a lot, for a lot of people, I think they are their favorite pet with benefits. <laughs> Because they're entertaining, they're fun, and they give you eggs. They it's- do. <laughs> and they're, they're pretty low maintenance. You know, once you get your routine down and you have your whole setup, they really are pretty low maintenance, which is nice. Yeah. I, I always tell people that if they can take care of a cat, they can probably take care of chickens. Do you have any kind of a benchmark like that for people? Yeah, I would say on our farm, our dog is probably the most high maintenance, you know, needs the most attention and wants to be played with and walked and everything. Um, And then probably come the chickens because, you know, you do have to be careful with predators and you have to lock them up at night and collect eggs and stuff. And then the cat is like lowest on the, the totem pole. He shows up twice a day for meals and that's about it. Yeah. So, um, one of the things that I really love about your book, and um, I think if I do a revision of my goat book, I should add a chapter on this because so many people want to spoil their chickens and their goats. You know, if, if you didn't grow up on a farm and you, you get some of these pets with benefits, you're so used to dogs and cats and spoiling them. And so I love the fact that you have that chapter in there. Because you like, you've just accepted it. it. When I hear people are like, oh, I want to give my goat treats. And I'm like, they don't need treats. Like, I just need to go with it. So um, love the fact that you have that chapter in there. Can you give people a few pointers if they want to spoil their chickens? Like just a few things of what's okay. And then what are some of the definite no-nos that are not going to be good for your chickens? Absolutely. And it's a big point of contention because there are people, even backyard chicken keepers, who believe that chickens don't need treats. They just should eat their chicken feed, period. That's it. And, you know, the way I feel like our our dogs love treats, you know, we as people like treats and chickens might not have the most developed taste buds, but they definitely have preferences when it comes to foods. And they get super excited when they see you coming with, you know, maybe trimmings from the garden or some kitchen scraps. And I think one of the big benefits of chickens is that they're little composters, you know, so we don't waste any food in our house. I have a bowl next to the the stove when I cook and my mother did and my grandmother did and all the ends and trimmings and anything that doesn't you know go into our food goes into that bowl pretty much and the chickens eat it so you know it's a great way not to waste any food to cut down on your food bill and as long as it's in moderation and your chickens aren't filling up on you know really fatty or greasy or salty type foods it's going to be fine you know the rule of thumb is to feed them about 10 percent of their diet treats so a chicken eats about a half a cup of food a day So you're talking like a tablespoon of chicken, but no, I don't measure anything out. You know, as as long as your family's eating healthy and you're eating a lot of fruits and vegetables and whole grains, chickens are omnivores. 
So they can have meat scraps, they can have fish scraps. Our chickens love when we get lobster because I throw them all the shells and the insides and everything. They pick them clean. You know, it, it just makes a little fun in their life. I mean, it's gonna be fairly boring to be a chicken, especially if they're locked up in a run for most of the day. You know, so that little bucket of, of scraps, I, I admit I don't buy a lot of commercial chicken, chicken treats. You know, there's enough in the garden or in the lawn. I mean, I could pick a, a bucket of dandelion greens and throw it in the water and the ducks especially you know they think they've hit pay dirt <laughs> you know <laughs> ducks are super low maintenance they are they're not really picky at all um but you know we'll go out to dinner and i know my husband gets so embarrassed but i mean i'll ask everybody at our table for all of their leftovers that they're not going to eat you know that little piece of tail and the, the thing of parsley and whatever is on their plate and i just ask for one big box and i bring it all home for the chickens so our chickens live we just lost one she was nine and a half years old um I have a lot that are six and seven and eight years old. Our oldest ducks are 12 years old. So clearly chicken and ducks can have treats. You know, they've, they've had treats almost every day their whole life. So I'm, I'm a big believer in treats. Yeah. So I have a friend who is a vegetarian and has backyard chickens. And I'm glad you mentioned having some senior chickens because um, this is an area where I am really not very good at answering people's questions because um, we raise chickens, we sell the eggs. And so usually after age three, they go to the stew pot. Um, and so <laughs> my friend who's a vegetarian, you know, who has chickens that have lived to be nine and 10 years old said that it's really a misnomer to say that they ever stop laying completely. Um, cause she knows her chicken so well, she knows who lays what eggs a lot of times. And she says that she's had some that, you know, she's like, yeah, they still pop out an egg every now and then when they get older. Um, what would you say really can someone expect if they keep chickens beyond about age three in terms of laying? That, no, that's a really good question because we have the room and nobody cares how many chickens we have. So we you know, don't have a problem with keeping the older hens, they still will eat bugs and weeds. They still provide a lot of fertilizer. They'll still sit on eggs. Some of my older hens have been really great moms. You know, they, they, they don't like to walk around as much and they're fine with just sitting in a box for three weeks, you know, so they, they really do make, make great moms if they want to hatch some chicks. So there's definitely benefits to having the older hens and keeping them around. Um, they don't eat you know, terribly much. So it's not a huge expense if you don't have a huge flock. Um, but they will slow down laying after about, about three years old. We'll drop about 20% a year. So by five or six years old, they're probably only laying a couple eggs in the spring and that's all you'll get from them. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of benefits to keeping them around. And, you know, I know a lot of people when the chickens get older, they'll kind of let them free range a little bit more, figuring, well, you know, if something happens, they've had a good life. So it's not you know, the end of the world. And that way they're going to eat even less because they're eating a lot of grass and herbs and things like that on their own. Yeah. So I, and this is probably a hugely controversial question here. Um, but do you have any favorite breeds? I do actually, you know, it's funny because the last couple of podcasts I've done, people have kind of hesitated to ask me that or, you know, saying, I don't know if this is a hard question for you, but <laughs> I absolutely love Australorps. That was our chicken that we lost. She was our flock matriarch uh, and she was nine. She had just had her ninth birthday and um, we lost her a couple winters ago, but they're hardy. They are good layers. They're good moms. They have great temperament. They're beautiful. I mean, they're solid black chickens. They lay kind of light pink eggs. I just think they're a perfect all around breed. We had them in Virginia and they did okay in the heat, which is weird because they're, you know, solid black. You would think that they wouldn't. Um, but they do great in the cold. So if you can only pick one breed, I would say the Australorp. But, you know, if you can get five chickens, get five different breeds. There's no reason to just limit yourself to one breed. Yeah, I like that idea, too, because it I heard somebody early on talk about having a flock of different chickens, um, like having a flower garden with a lot of different flowers in it. You get to see all these pretty colors running around in your yard. That's true. They look prettier. They lay different color eggs, which is fun. And also you can tell them apart, you know, so if you have kids and they want to name them or you know, as adults, you want to name them, but also it's important because if, if one is sick or if you think, you know, one looks like something might be going on, if you have five chickens that are the same breed, the next day, you're not maybe even going to be able to figure out which chicken that was. So for lots of reasons, um, having different breeds is a good idea. 
Yeah. That's why I like Nigerian dwarf goats because they come in all different colors. And I tell people when I look out onto the pasture, I, and I see something happening, I want to know what goat I'm looking at. You know, like I think Sonnens are beautiful, but I've had like three white Nigerians before and I would look out there and I'd be like, who is that? What's happening? And I wound up getting them different colored collars so that I could recognize them from a distance. Right. And there's different personalities too. You know, chickens have a, a bigger personalities I think than people realize and once you start raising the different breeds you're going to narrow down which you like and which you don't over the years I've tried some breeds that I just don't like and I wouldn't get again for various reasons you know but they all do have somewhat different personalities so you know if you have five buff Warpingtons they might be a little different in personality, but they're all going to be pretty similar. Whereas if you have an Australorp and a Buff Orpington and a Wyandotte, you know, and a coach and a Brahma, it's going to be more like a little community because each one of them is going to have their own personality. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I've noticed that too. Um, and that's one reason that um, I have always had barred rocks. I may have other chickens out there, but I always have the barred rocks because I just, they're so mellow which I think that's a really great attribute um, for chickens yeah. that are going to be around people. Definitely. Yeah. I, I tried Wyandots and I found them not really friendly at all. I tried black copper morons, same reason, did not like them, even though I loved their dark chocolate eggs um, and Rhode Island reds can be pretty aggressive as well. You know, so it, depending on your reason for getting chickens, um, if you want, you know, lap chickens or chickens that are going to be super friendly, probably those breeds you want to stay away from. Yeah. So when I introduced you, I mentioned that your book is a classic and it has been out there since 2013. So I was just wondering if you had any plans for any type of a revision. I actually don't. A couple of years ago, I did go through the book. My publisher asked me to go through it and sort of update anything that had changed. But honestly, the things that are in that book, I personally do and still do. I did back in 2013 and I still do now. So, you know, 90% of the book, when I was rereading it, it's things that I still believe in and stand behind and do with my own flock. And then I did update a couple of things and we added some new photos. But as far as putting out a brand new edition of it, not enough would really change. You know, it's, it's things that early on I had researched and tried out and they work. You know, it's almost like that old adage, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And there's, there's not really a lot that I would change. Yeah, exactly. My publisher told me, cause I told my publisher, I wanted to do an expanded and revised edition of my goat book after five years. And they said, well, you have to have at least 25% new for us to oh. do that. Otherwise, you know, if you just have a few things you want to change, that's fine. And the next time we do another print run, the corrections or changes will be in there. Um, and I guess I'm pretty long winded. And <laughs> in terms of goats, there's a lot of research had been done in the previous mm -hmm. five years. So I actually had just a ton of new stuff, completely new stuff that I wanted to add. And so that's why I did it. Um, no, I think it is a good idea if it is that much changing. And, and there have been some studies that I suppose that I could cite. Um, but I, I think the book is actually in its like 11th or 12th printing. I mean, it just keeps selling and selling, you know, but, but I kind of like, I kind of like that it's sort of dated in a way because like you said, it is a classic, you know, and, and you don't keep, you know, republishing Gone with the Wind every 10 years and changing it. Like there's something to be said for leaving it as is. Yeah, exactly. Before we go, I want to just talk a little bit about your book um, about ducks and having duck eggs. Who should have ducks for eggs instead of chickens? Or is it a plus ducks? Everybody, everybody <laughs> should have ducks. <laughs> We love our ducks. If I had to choose and someone said to me right now, you can either have only chickens or only ducks, I would have only ducks. They're so much healthier, so much lower maintenance. They're so funny. The eggs are bigger. They're better for baking. Ducks are better layers. Ducks love the rain, the snow, the cold, you know, chickens are grumpy. If, if it's raining, they don't want to lay. If it's cold, they don't want to walk on the snow. If it's too hot, whatever. Ducks are happy every day, no matter what the weather is, we just love our ducks. They're, they're just so much fun. That's awesome. The, the way that you said all that, like, yeah, you're right. Like, I can't disagree with anything you just said. Cause I have ducks too. Um, the only thing I've ever said is we have a pond. And so that makes it really easy for us. 
we have an aerator on the pond that keeps it from freezing. And one winter, the electricity went out and the hole in the pond froze over and the ducks went in the chicken coop and like within an hour had made the biggest mess imaginable with the chicken water or they had completely emptied it out. So there was this massive flick of ice where the chicken waterer was. And I told my husband, I'm like, if we don't get electricity back soon, these ducks are history. <laughs> and that's the one thing that I think people don't realize when they get ducks, they get ducks and they just add them to their chicken coop. And we have a firm rule, no feed or water in the coop ever year round, everybody eats outside. You know, if the ducks had their own place to live, the chickens could definitely have the feed and water in the coop. But you're right, the ducks learn to empty those gravity feeders and waterers in no time. And they think that it's just a way for them to make a huge puddle. You know, so we have food and water outside all the time. I use big tubs, but I don't use the gravity waters at all. And I do try to get the ducks out into the yard as much as possible. They have a kiddie pool, they don't have a pond, but they do have a kiddie pool and I just put it out in the yard. So it's not getting the coop, you know, as long as you manage their water mass, I think ducks are super low maintenance. Yeah, exactly. Well, this has been really interesting. Is there any um, final tips that you would have for somebody who wants to get started with chickens or ducks? I would just say, do your research, do your reading, you know, um, don't think that you're going to learn how to raise any animal just following somebody on Instagram or Facebook. I mean, you've got to actually read some books, read some magazines, read some, you know, educational sites, or I find the main um, extension service has amazing poultry information. Before we even moved to Maine, I was reading their website because they had so much great information. So, you know, know what you're, you're getting into, learn the basics about your animal to decide if it's right for you. But I mean, you know, they're, they're fun. Yeah, exactly. I know kids, chickens, the gateway livestock. (laughs) Absolutely. We just added geese like two years ago and they have been a blast as well. So you're right. You start with the chickens and then that's the end, the end of it. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks.